Welcome back to Lesson 2 in Human Biology. Today we're going to be looking at the cell membrane. So here's some key words for today's lesson. Um, the ones that I want to really draw your attention to are the terms plasma membrane and fluid mosaic model. So the plasma membrane is the cell membrane and it's often described as being a fluid mosaic model and that's because of the structure of the membrane. Now the membrane consists of all of these other words, these parts here. The most important and the most numerous of those are the phospholipids. Now the phospholipids are, as the name suggests, lipids, which means they are fat-based, and they have a, a section that is hydrophilic and hydrophobic. They also contain an array of proteins and a molecule called cholesterol. Now, before we start, just another reminder that this um, lesson coincides with your textbook uh, chapter 4, pages 40 to 44. I strongly recommend that you read those pages either before, during or after this lesson to help consolidate that knowledge. So by the end of this topic or this lesson, you should be able to describe the structure of the cell membrane or plasma membrane. So when we look at a cell, we're now um, comfortable with naming all these organelles within the cell. And we understand that there's a physical barrier, that cell or plasma membrane around the outside. Now, because the cell is a living organism, or part of a living organism, in the case of humans, we need to get nutrients into the cell, and we need to remove waste from it. So you should know from your um, lessons in junior school that the nutrients that we need to live are water, oxygen, and various nutrients, mostly glucose or sugar. The waste products that we produce um, as a result of these key um, compounds entering the cell and processes taking place, the waste products we produce are carbon dioxide, water and some heat energy. Now how we get from this side to this side is through the process of cellular respiration. But we'll talk about that in another lesson. But the important thing to understand is how these key um, nutrients get into the cell. Because they have to go through that physical cell membrane to do that. So just a little reminder of what respiration is um, from a lower school perspective. It is the com combination of glucose plus oxygen um, breaking down to reform into carbon dioxide and water and crucially forming energy. Okay, so here we have a cell um, micrograph. Um, it's a high power image of that cell membrane. Now similar to that cartoon structure, you can see that double layer. So there's the outside layer, the middle and that inside layer. And you can see down here that this is actually uh, a vesicle. So if we look at that cell membrane again and we uh, magnify it, we get a structure that looks like this. Really different to that simple straight line that you drew in um, lower school. It's actually quite a complex um, arrangement in here. So you can see that there all these heads are sticking either um, out or in towards the inside of the cell and we have these big blobs of proteins with some other stuff sticking up round about it. So the cell membrane is um, a complex organelle and what its job is is to separate the intracellular environment, so that's the inside of the cell, from the extra or outside environment, the extracellular environment of the cell. The, the four main functions of your cell membrane 
um, as I've mentioned before, is to act as a physical barrier. It also regulates what substances can move in and out of the cell. So if you think back to our first lesson, we talked about the cell being like a city. So it, like, like the city gates, it can regulate what comes in and out by opening those gates and closing them. And um, that's a good analogy for the cell membrane. The cell membrane can also detect um, if anything in its environment. So it will, it will notice what's going on round about it. And they also act to support other cells because remember in the human body they're not working alone. Okay, so here we've got a image of the cell membrane um, again and just to highlight it's got these um, lollipop heads on the outside and it's got these long tails in the middle so they're facing either out or in to the cell. Now, the cell membrane is mostly made up of this stuff and these are called phospholipids. The pink blobs that you can see here, these are the proteins. Now you can see that there is some carbohydrate represented by this green tail here and we also have cholesterol, that's these little yellow bead looking things here. Cholesterol is really important to the cell membrane because it's a scaffolding material. It provides support and structure. Okay, so now we're going to look um, at the phospholipid structure in more detail. Phospholipids, as the name suggests, are a type of lipid, um, which is a fat-based molecule, which is made up of something called glycerol and it also has a phosphate group, hence the name. So phospholipid for, to recognize the phosphate part and the lipid part. So it has this phosphate head and it has these two fatty acid tails. Now the heads point out the way either towards the outside or the extracellular environment of um, the cell or it, they face inside towards the intracellular environment. And that's because the phosphate heads are water loving. So the Greek term for water loving is hydro for water and philic to love. So if you put those two words together, it says hydrophilic. Okay, so the heads are hydrophilic and that's why they point outwards. And it also means that these heads are soluble in water. The tails on the other hand are water fearing so that's why they point in the way they want to stay away from the water. They are hydrophobic so if you're phobic if you have a phobia or something you're scared of it. Okay so this is a little cartoon to show what we're trying to illustrate here in terms of a cell membrane. The tails are scared of water so they're moving away from that water pistol so they are hydrophobic whereas the heads love it and that's why this little guy is smiling so the heads are hydrophilic. So when we look at the majority of the cell membrane it's made up of lots and lots and lots of these phospholipids and they arrange themselves in two layers, which is why it's called the phospholipid bilayer. So the fatty acid tails, as I've said before, are hydrophobic, so they point inwards, as you can see here. They are trying to keep away from the water, whereas the hydrophilic or water-loving heads are facing outwards because they really want to interact with the water. Okay, so we've addressed the phospholipids and now we're going to be looking at the plasma proteins. So plasma proteins are just cell proteins, so they kind of look like these blobby things here. Now they're really important. They can do lots of different jobs in the cell. So they can act as receptors, so they can tell another molecule that yes, they need to come and interact with the cell. They can be channels to allow things to go through they can be enzymes, which are special chemicals that speed up the rate of reaction. 
They can be little markers on the surface of the cell so you know that that cell belongs to you or not. And they can transport things in and around the cell. This video um, is a really good overview that describes the arrangement of proteins within the cell membrane and I would strongly suggest that you watch that. Okay, so here we've got a little cartoon um, series of images showing those membrane proteins. So you have this one here, which has a complementary shape to a receptor molecule. So if I want my cell to do something in particular, it won't do it without receiving that receptor. Um, and that can make it do a number of things, such as open up a gate to allow a molecule to enter or leave. We also have these channel proteins. So again, these are like pores or holes in the membrane, and they allow small things to enter or exit the cell. We have these little identity markers. So this is why your body knows not to attack other um, cells in the body, because they all have the same stamp or marker on them, and it will recognize you and not attack you. This protein here is an enzyme, so all of these are proteins. This uh, particular um, protein, the enzyme protein, will speed up the rate of chemical reactions so that we can do things at a good enough pace that allows us to live. Okay, so now we're going to be looking at other structures in the cell membrane. So we've looked at those phospholipids, remembering it's a bilayer because there's two of them. And we have these phospholipids that have that water-loving head, which is hydrophilic, and the water-fearing tails, which are hydrophobic. We've also got cholesterol and what well, we just touched on, proteins. Now, it's really important that you remember the role of cholesterol. It provides stability, so it's um, like an anchoring molecule. We need that in our membrane to provide stability. So often we're told that cholesterol is bad for us. Not the case, not always. You can get bad cholesterol, but we can also have essential cholesterol that allows us to live. Okay, and here is just um, a little recap of the different types of proteins that we can find in our cell membranes. Um, we've talked about those before, so um, I would urge you to go back and review this in your textbook. Okay, so here's a little cartoon picture of the plasma or cell membrane. Now, again, you can identify all the different regions of it, and um, it's often described as a fluid mosaic model. And the reason for that is because the plasma or cell membrane is constantly moving. You know that it's um, not a rigid structure because if someone um, prods you in the back or touches you on the shoulder, you know that your skin moves, it depresses down a little bit. And every single cell um, that makes up your skin has a cell membrane, so it has to be fluid to allow that movement. It's um, also known as a mosaic structure because we have this scattering of proteins throughout. Okay, so here's a summary of what we've learned so far. The plasma membrane is made up of two main molecules. Those are the phospholipids and the proteins and its major function is act to act as a barrier that surrounds the cell. The phospholipid molecules themselves have a hydrophilic head, which means water-loving, and a hydrophobic tail, which means water-fearing. This property allows them to form a bilayer where you have the tails facing inwards and the heads outwards. You've got some proteins that span the entire length of that bilayer, so they are classed as intrinsic proteins. And then you have ones that are partially embedded, which are known as extrinsic, so they're only on one side. And some of these proteins will have a carbohydrate group attached, um, and that can do various functions such as cell signaling or cell identification, and these are known as glycoproteins. 
Now, there are various functions of the cell membrane. Some of them are to signal, as I just mentioned, um, while others are involved in transport across the cell membrane. And I've used these words passive, which means it doesn't require energy, or it could be an active process where energy is actively required to move things across the membrane. We now know that the plasma membrane is described as a fluid mosaic model, and that's to acknowledge the flexible nature of that membrane and the scattering of proteins. And lastly, we need to know that cholesterol is um, an important steroid structure within that cell membrane that helps to keep it stable. Okay, so I've got a little question here from an exam. This um, is asking you to identify structures A and B. So pause the video and see if you can do that. Okay, so hopefully that you understood that structure A is a protein. You didn't necessarily have to give the exact um, name of the protein, but that would be an extrinsic one. And B is referring to the carbohydrate or glycoprotein region of the cell membrane. Okay, so that's the end of today's lesson. So your final task is to complete pages 14 and 15 of your class booklet. Um, please complete the questions there and make sure that you read your textbook.